<clears throat> so we'll go with the supply chain management so where edi will come come into picture in the supply chain management so as you all have know the supply chain management how the goods are manufactured and uh, move to customer customer to retail retailer to consumer so the end product how the consumer receive the end product is nothing but supply chain management so where uh, why i am showing this means uh, so all the eda transactions like different different domains all are how interrelated like warehouse transactions like order processing means retail flow so these are different different retail flow transactions and logistics transactions so these are the different different domains so so these all are interrelated okay so i have uh, one brief one yeah so now we'll go with all so if you see the this is a manufacturing and this is a warehouse and this is the carrier logistics and these are retailers okay so while all the manufacturer uh, site will develop the goods and it will be transferred those goods to the godown or the warehouses so using a transaction set called line 43 warehouse this the transaction name is warehouse stock transfer so when the, once the warehouse received the stock it will send an acknowledgement to the manufacturer like a receipt that we have received your stock so this number 944 stock transfer receipt okay and then whenever the retailers will place an order to the manufacturer for example you can take a gsk company where this manufacturing like a sensor and paste horlicks boost okay the gsk company so whenever the retailer like uh, reliance or anybody else okay send an 850 to the manufacturer so then the manufacturer will send acknowledgement means 855 is nothing but acknowledgement to the purchase order and to the retailer that we have received your order and it will be placed and these are the items acknowledged okay and then once the items are acknowledged the manufacturer team will send an order to the warehouse is nothing but a warehouse shipping order so now the warehouse whatever the orders received by the manufacturer so it will be loading into the or it will be <clears throat> loading into the logistics like carrier lorries so using a transaction called 204 it is nothing but load tender load tender okay so once the, the goods were loaded the carrier team will send a response call 990 he is nothing but response to the load tender so once the warehouse got the information from the carrier team and then the warehouse will send acknowledgement to the manufacturer he is nothing but a 945 it's a warehouse shipping order confirmation so once all this is done now the warehouse will send a shipment notification to the retailer boss that your goods were loaded into so on so lorry and the shipment will be, shipment start date and then it will be delivered and so on so in the particular address and how the goods were packed so in the edi in the 856 we'll have how the goods are packed in the order in the order organized way so for example one shipment will be there in one shipment we'll have multiple orders and one order will have pack level or tear levels and in the pack level we'll have sub items okay so like that how it is organized way also it will be explained or it will be detailed in the advanced shipment notification transaction that is nothing but 856 okay so 856 will send an acknowledgement uh, if notification from warehouse to the retailer so once the retailer received it the care of carrier team will send in status messages boss we are start and we'll and we are at so and so place so like the tracking the, the thing but shipment status message so after this and then after uh, unloading here or delivering the goods now the carrier opt for the payment that we have as per your advice warehouse team we have low we have uh, unloaded everything and we have delivered and this is the price how much happened this is nothing but invoice okay so that the carrier invoice this one and once they receive the uh, warehouse invoices okay and the manufacturer now will send an 810 to the retailer this is nothing but 810 means invoice to the retailers 210 means carriers invoice 
okay so once the retailer received the invoice and it will pay he will pay the bill my retailer will pay the amount using a transaction called 820 it's a payment order or remittance advice so this is how the transactions are involved actually uh, in my uh, in my experience we should uh, i used to work on uh, multiple because one client i have worked for siva logistics where uh, it's a logistics so all the transactions called more number of transactions are 204 990s and everything and they have warehouses also because it's a 3pl so we'll have a 3pl 2pl so who, he won't warehouses and then logistics also and then he will maintain the warehouse transactions using 943 and then uh, mostly i was into retail transactions only so i worked on 850 855 856 810 820 so these are the retail general retail transactions for a number of clients uh, i have worked for that as well and then some of the clients where i worked so all are retail transactions only so in this way the real time also for these transactions will start developing the maps Okay, so usually uh, we will get an uh, MRS documents, okay, mapping requirement specifications. If not, so we should be in a stage as we are well experienced, we should, we should be in a stage to review the input file. Actually, uh, they will share the input files to us. So we will review the input file and implementation guide as well. So whatever the 204 is there, right, load tenders. So that implementation guide will be shared by the vendor or trading partner. So based on that, We'll try to develop the map or else as a smart way so we can if it's a trading partner is from the same region where we have existing partner so almost the transactions and segments will be similar so we will take that map as a base map the existing map and do our uh, necessary changes so in this way also we will work okay and then once we have the expected output so we will share with our business users and then we'll go for the uat so if it is SAP system means they will try to load the same input, same expected output to the SAP systems. So once we got an approvals and then we'll go to the next level. So this part of mapping development. Okay. So these all the transactions we should convert from EDI to IDOCS or IDOC to EDI. And then uh, uh, IDOC takes different, different formats and ADFACTS. facts. So we used to work on various formats. And one more thing is for every EDI transaction, so we receive an acknowledgement, whether it is an X12 or a defect. We have different, different transactions, right? So in X12, so the, the functional acknowledgement is 997. Whereas in AD fact, the status message, the reply means the acknowledgement is control, C-O-N-T-R-L. For every AD fact messages, you'll, be, you'll get an C-O-N-T-R-L as an acknowledgement. Here in Edifact, we'll call as messages, whereas in ANSI X12, we'll call as in um, transactions. Okay, so the transaction numbers I have shown you, like these are the nine for warehouse transactions. Whereas Edifact, the content is same, but the naming conventions actually because uh, ANSI X12 is followed by the all American region. Where Edifact is followed by all the Europe region. Okay, so here the numbers will be there, there the names will be there. That's why we'll call as a messages. Like if you see here, here 856 means advanced shipment notification. Where in the defect, this ADV means dispatch advice. Like that, 850 is purchase Sorry, order. Sorry, yeah, hello. Yeah, okay. Uh, will you be sharing this document as well with us after this training? Yeah, yeah. I will share each and his documents. So whatever I'm sharing you and also apart from that, I will give some uh, simple scenarios, actually at the solved maps. So okay. actually as you're into practical, right? So, uh, and won't server also there. So I will give the maps and then you can start uh, working on the maps. The mapping. I would appreciate and... if you can give us a high level overview of NCXL and really packed message structure also. For example, like in NC, you have ISA segment, CRM segment, and then you have a very brief idea, but. Uh, okay, I will go that, that, that one also. Can... Yeah, yeah that, that one also. Actually, you'll feel bored, but uh, I'll go that one also. I thought. No, no, uh, we, know... we just need a high level overview. Like, yeah, sure, uh, sure. We'll go through that. If we see a document, uh, we yeah. should be able to. Understand, understand what are the segments and what are the elements in yeah. order and how they are related so just okay. show a sample uh, uh, document and you can explain us that should be sufficient no need to go in detail uh, that okay. should be sufficient okay okay okay, okay. i'll go so after this actually i will go okay so this is what the difference between edifact and ansi x12 
so let me go through the so for uh, bigness actually so what is b2b what is trading partner so what is EDA, the advantages so what are the different standards actual ad facts so what is translation so how to convert the documents uh, how how why we call inbound what is outbound so everything so this is structure so as you know so isa is opening is interchange header interchange trailer so functional group and then functional group trailer transaction set header transaction set trailer so in between stsc we'll have the respective segments of particular transactions okay so in one isn one iea we can have nine five nines means 99999 of gsg envelopes but i never only in the real time experience we'll see only one gsg envelope under one isa but in one gsg envelope we can see multiple st envelopes okay means for 850 we'll have multiple orders in the place like that okay but the, here also the maximum number as per the area standard the maximum number is so this 9, 850 000. that is specified that is uh, uh, in analogy to the function group is that a correct understanding yeah, in yeah. The interchange i can receive 850 as well as 820 850 would be in a separate GS and 820 would be in a separate GS. Yeah, that, that one, yeah, like that it would be there. But it will not see, it's a very rare in my experience. Uh, I have seen only once that one GS is for 850 and one other GS is for 855. But uh, normally, because it will be hard in the mapping to differentiate it. Mm -hmm. So normally trading partners are not, I didn't see much, only one in one my pro, in one project I have seen like that. But in the yeah, other project. That's a valid, valid uh, EDA document having. Yeah. Uh, multiple GS like a 50, a 55, functions. Yeah, it's valid only because in interchange we'll have other one because it should be same trading partner. And this ST and SC group uh, block that actually gives will give the providing details of that 850. So I can have multiple uh, uh, 850 document SC SC for a 850 yeah. function group. Exactly, exactly. So if GS is PO, means GS functional ID is PO, then the STSC should be only 850s because the top, the GS is PO. PO is a functional identifier code, GS01. If you have another GS uh, with the functional identifier code is uh, PR or IN, means invoices. So only in that STSC, we should have only 810s. Okay. So this is the structure of AD fact. So I, UNB and UNZ is for the ISA and IEA and UNZ and UNE GSG and UNH and UNT is similar to STSC. The basic difference here is uh, while we creating envelopes. So we'll create envelopes in the dashboard. So but in the ANSI X12 need to create compulsory ISA GS ST3 envelope should be created. Whereas in any fact, so the GS is not a mandatory. You can create may or may not be. But the UNB and UNT envelopes are mandatory in the ID fact side. So now if you go to the segment, so IAS is segment, right? So IAS is a fixed length. The total length is 106. Okay, so it need to follow standards and we'll have 16 elements in the IAS standard. Okay, these are the different, different elements like information qualifier, authorization information, uh, security information qualifier, security information, ID qualifier, sender ID, the receiver ID. So if you see this, all are mandatory that to the maximum length and minimum length are alike means it should be two and maximum should be two. And it is sender ID is 15 by 15 means the minimum and maximum is 15. Yeah, For example, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, Nimesh, I'm talking in mute. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, we'll start uh, creating envelopes in the dashboard under uh, trading partner. So we have an option called trading partner. Under trading partner, we'll create an uh, envelopes for every EDA transactions, whether it is an inbound or outbound. And see, so you said that uh, ISA uh, 
there certain mandatory elements for yeah exactly no, no, actually yeah. yeah in while creating envelopes in ISS is ANSI X12 standard okay in X12 standard we need to create compulsory three set of envelopes means for every one partner individual partner for his transaction means for example if Nimesh is a trading partner Nimesh is having three transactions like 850 856 and 810 okay mm -hmm. no for all the transactions of Nimesh for 850 we need to create a set of envelopes for 856 we need to create a set of envelopes for 810 set of envelopes like isa gs st okay and mm -hmm. and then for example isa is common for everybody right means uh, there will be no functional identifier code in the isa so isa is common for every transactions of nimesh so isa mm -hmm. will be only one envelope and gs okay. will have multiple envelopes means while you start uh, working you will come to know all this Okay. We'll be having those sessions as well. So then yeah, yeah. Ah, I yeah, know, yeah, all the sessions. I got a brief idea. Like uh, if I am a trading partner working on ANSI X12 and say I am exchanging documents like 820, 850, so on. Right. So the envelope that I would be creating would have one ISA for the main trading partner. And I would be having two GS for 820 and 850 yeah. envelopes, right? Yes. And similarly, uh, envelope for GS. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Sorry, ST. Yeah, for ST also, we'll have two envelopes. Actually, so we usually we'll have ISA, GS, ST. Okay. Mm -hmm. But while you're working, and if, mm -hmm. if, if someone asks me, I need to create three envelopes only for 850, 856 also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Already the ISA is there, right? So it will be duplicate. Yes. It will not allow and uh, create a duplicate. That's why I said one. Okay. It's not an, a mandatory that I need to create one because it will not allow itself. And for but, EDA, EDA fact, uh, what was the... Uh, yeah, the, the functional group, the UNZ and UNE group is not mandatory. So you can create or not create as your wish, but usually we don't create in my experience. So we usually create that interchange header like a UNB and the UNH envelopes only while in the EDA facts. Okay, can we go back to that EDA fact enveloping uh, in the screen? Yeah, so UNB and UNG is non-mandatory. That's what you mentioned, right? Yeah, UNG and UNE functional group. The green color is there. Right? Functional group is not a mandatory. Whereas interchange group and message group is mandatory. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, from our uh, interest also, we work on both the day factor and C X twelve messages. Okay. okay. So it's good that if we can go through the envelope part, that would give us safety and understanding. Uh, maybe we'll be taking that at later stage also. Yeah, yeah, later stage we while we start working on the business process. So we'll go with that one. So, uh, uh, I think Venkat, till the time that you got joins, you can mute this, uh, pause this recording also. Once she yeah, joins, yeah, yeah. we can uh, Yeah, yeah can, uh, Nimesh, yeah. yeah. I'm back. I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can resume the recording, Venkat, to ensure that we have yeah, done Yeah, I've done it, done it. I have done it. It's started recording. Yeah, we can proceed. Okay. So in the meantime, Rishika, so we are discussing the scope and uh, how to create envelopes in the dashboard. That's it. The general thing we will cover in our next uh, sessions when we start the development. So just we are on to EDI part, like here in ISA envelopes in ISA. So we'll have a 16 elements here. I say we'll have 16 elements in that too. So generally we'll discuss with the control member only. So can you support support team or any other teams? So they will share only the control number and they will ask everything. So this is the control number we have said. Can you please check and let us know whether this control number is processed or not? Or the invoice number means next will come. In the ISA, the main thing we need to remember is control number and sender ID and receiver ID, however it is common, who is sending and who is receiving. And then control version and control number. Version means, for example, if you take the 850 transaction, we'll have multiple flavors like 3010, 3050, 4010, 4030, 6010. There are different, different versions because just addition of segments to the current version it will it, nothing but it's a new version so like that we have different versions and then 
the acknowledgement requested usage indicator component element separator so acknowledgement requested means in the isa document so if you see the isa by seeing its 14th element okay you will come to know whether this document is expecting acknowledgement or not if it is zero means yes okay one means yes means no so like that acknowledgement requested will be there usage indicator means whether this document belongs to production document or test document if it is t means it belongs to test environment okay if it is p means it belongs to production environment component element separator means so element element uh, uh, sub element you can say sub element under element will have sub elements for that any separator means it's a component element separator usually all the time it will be greater than symbol so date and time you are aware and the repetition separator means when is same strings i mean same special characters as an element delimiter segment a repeater will use it okay and then security information qualifier security information authorization information qualifier authorization information always uh, dummy actually in my experience i never uh, used to work or used to know on that one also always it will be either empty spaces or zero zero zeros all these things and sender id receiver id control number version is a meant to remove with those only okay and iea means number of included functional groups means in one isa iea under isa iea how many gs gs are there that many count will present in the iea first element nothing but number of included functional groups and two is a control number see here the control number should match with the isa 13th element control number then only it is an edi valid document otherwise we will fail at a compliance errors means edi compliance errors is not a valid edi document so for all the set of envelopes will be there like isa gs st is common okay so yeah. each venkat do you have a sample you know file where you can kind of you know relate and let us know okay this is uh... yeah yeah actually my theme is uh, first i will explain this and then then i will compare both okay sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then gs so gs also it is an Please remember, IS is a fixed length. The total length is one not six, and then GS is variable length. Okay, there is no limit here. That's why if you see here, two, two, a two fifty means the minimum sender ID can be two, and the maximum is fifteen. But if you go to the ISA, it's a fifteen by fifteen. For example, if you say sender ID is Venkat, okay, Venkat is six letters only, boss. But you are saying is fifteen, right? How? Then we need to leave nine spaces. After Venkat, nine spaces. Then only the next element should run, should uh, have. Okay, that is why IS is a fixed length. And then functional identifier code means just for our purpose, for our uh, starting beginning purpose, I can say alias name. So for every transaction, we'll have an alias name. In future, we need to call only functional ID group. Okay, and then sender code, receiver code, date, time, control number. Whatever the control number there here, it should match with the G control number. The responsible agency is X, and then version. And if you go here, G is number of transactions set co included means how many ST, SC are there in one GS, GE is the count of G, G first element. And two is control number means the GS control number should match with the G control number. Okay. So the ISA is unique control number. In GS, we'll have a unique control number. In ST also, we'll have a unique control number. For every set, we'll have a unique control numbers. But the header and trailer, the number should match. That is the thing here. And ST means set identifier code means the number. If it is a purchase order, means eight five zero. If it is a purchase order acknowledgement, means eight five five. Like that. For every individual transaction, we need to represent the number here. And the second is control number. So transaction set control number. Third one is uh, only we'll see for four zero two zero version. So normally we will not see third element in our real time. And SC means number of included segments. Here we need to just remember one thing is so between ST SC you need to add two. So the count of SC zero one means. What are the elements or segments is there between ST and SC? And you need to add two. Why two means you need to add ST also and SC also. Then only the count count will be correct. 
okay i will show in the real time file then you will come to know and sc is control number okay so we will come later now i will open the any edi file so this is a an edi file so if you see here isa and the closing tag is ia and the gs closing tag is ge st and sc right so if you see here the maximum length is 106 okay and if you see the it is a element delimiter the star here represents element delimiter sometimes we'll find the segment delimiter as tilde so for every segment you will find a tilde these are the default uh, symbols or delimiters actually we will call as a delimiters but as a beginning i'm calling it symbols okay later on so these are the element delimiter and segment delimiters will be there so if you see here this is the authorization information to so authorization information qualifier security information qual qualifier security information interchange id qualifier interchange sender id interchange receiver id qualifier interchange receiver id and a date time reputation separator interchange control version interchange control number acknowledgement requested and then test document whether it is test or production document and then component element separator so these are the 16 elements we have now let us open the yes, sorry Vinkat. what was the purpose of this component separator greater than sign the component element separator means element inside element sub element okay so if if my st has some sub element uh, so under st will have elements right yeah but that, so for that, that element that, also sub element yeah yeah you can you go back to that notepad uh, yeah so here we don't have any sub elements right I don't uh, here any. we don't have any sub elements but it will and be a separator if, if it is there means it is sub, it's a separator and on line number 30 i see a tail sign so is that a segment separator if that is a segment separator why don't we have it for other yeah actually i used to explain it right actually we don't okay, have okay. this space is a delimiter that's it the end the end of the line is delimiter but i used okay. to explain to the people that for some part it will be till as a delimiter okay. so till is a default delimiter i guess yeah till is a default delimiter for segment yeah, for okay, segment. star is a default delimiter for element okay okay individual separations for the elements till is then uh, segment delimiter mm -hmm. okay and if you are having uh, because your ISA segment is a fixed length of 106 characters. Yes. If one of your element is not available, we re we replace that with uh, zeros. Is that space, space? Space, space, space. Okay. So the third element in this ISA and the fifth element are zeros. Yeah, zeros. Actually, it's always it's zeros. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's based on trading. How the trading pattern will send? We need to accept. It. That's it. But okay. we, nowhere in the coding or nowhere in the while creating envelopes also we will not use this one. Okay. Only these are mandatory. Okay. Whatever I'm highlighting, right? Yeah. So control number default it will be we'll accept in the inbound. So these are the default, but we never use this all these things. Yeah, thank you. But we need to add the zeros or sometimes spaces will be there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now what we need to check is if you see the control number here, so it is matching with the is ia control number and why the count is one means so the g is g so if you see there is no other gsg in one isia that's why the count is one here okay now if you come to gs it is a functional identifier code so for time being i am saying as alias name so for 850 the alias name is po means nothing but functional identifier code and sender id receiver id date time control number so if you see the control number gs and ge is same and then responsible NC code or it's always x okay and then version so this is a version and if you see the st it's a number means transaction but this all, all belongs to the purchase order segments and elements and these are control number so st and sc control number should match and then if you come to sc total number of segments between st sc okay see the count is 31 right so what i said 31 plus 
S T plus C S C then thirty three. So you should add this one also. Okay, but only for S T. Okay, that is standard. We need to follow it, and then control number. That's why as an uh, arithmetically manual operations, I said as uh, between S T and S C the count thirty one plus two. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is how we understand it. For example, uh, if I I'm an example, I'm a beginner. I don't know. So I will definitely confuse of seeing the stars, numbers. Definitely, I will not understand. Even one bit also I will not understand. What is I just said? Okay. So as a developers, we should be in a stage or we should be in a stage to uh, uh, compare the given. document by the trading partner with the given input file so if you are if you are good in that nothing to learn about the edi because in the real time also we will get all the documents so just we need to know how to compare with it for example uh, i am a new i don't know uh, one of the client or uh, my colleague asked me the can you share the po number for this control number okay so i want to know the po number For the specified ISA control number, if I'm I I'm new to the world EDI world, so I have okay. However, I opened this document by the control number I have opened it, but I don't know where I can see the which number I need to share as a PO number. I don't know. Okay, so then our trading partner also provides implementation guide. So I will go to the implementation guide. and i'll search for the po number okay here some purchase order is there and i will see like this purchase or transaction set and i will see like this. so now i found it so 03 is a purchase order number means in bg segment third element is the po number okay i got it now i'll go to the file okay i will come to bg One, two, three. Okay, got it. Now I will reply him, boss. This is the PO number for the particular ISA you have requested to me. So in this way, we should be aware of how to compare the implementation guide with a given input file. Surely, in most of the segments elements, me I too don't know. Why is that PO number means I uh, we used to work daily. DP means department number. So I really PS means I don't know. So I need to open the particular implementation guide. And one thing to remember is you need to open that particular implementation guide, that partner's particular implementation guide only. Then only you can see all the qualifiers. If the input file is one partner and you are seeing the implementation guide for other partner, means you will not get all the things. Okay, because that trading partner is following that implementation guide. That's why they shared you that their uh, book booklet to you. so the input files also will be there as per the booklet trading partner provided but if you open one trading partner's input file other trading partner implementation guide means almost it will be same but some qualifiers will be not there then it will be confused in that case you can open in the internet and ref ps qualifier so i don't know what is ps qualifier so what i will do just i'll google it eda ref RDF segment PS qualifier. See, but it's not a suffix. Something is there. So PS. So we'll have uh, thousands or lakhs. I don't know. the count of qualifiers but we have n number of uh, qualifiers no one can remember search for the ps because for, for now we need the ps qualifier only we got it uh, oh, got it right yes. okay. yeah Such is order number suffix. So in this way, we need to compare the implementation guide with the given uh, input files and go on because no one can remember all this. 
but the edi uh, business analyst will be there for those guys they will work with uh, these files only right? mostly they will understand means they will get to know okay for as a developers we, we should be in a position to compare the given input files with the implementation guides and get to know what is what what is what that's it so if you are good good in that no need to go more on edi okay so yeah, Venkat, your voice is not very clear. Can you come closer to the mic, please? Uh, no, actually, I'm far. Now I have brought the mic to. Yeah, it's better. Now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So. The simple retail flow. So uh, we discussed already, right? In supply chain management, that one only same it will be there. So the retail industry flow. So buyer and seller. The buyer will ask quotations for the multiple companies so what are you going to buy so to check the prices who is giving the best price like that so 840 is an request for quotation and then the seller they will give their quotation boss for this order this much price this much price and these items are available we can deliver soon or this or we have some offers some discounts and shipping charges so it's a response to the request for quotation and then the purchase order so once they receive the quotation the buyer will send an order will place an order to the particular seller boss i need this many things or this many items from you and immediately the seller will send an acknowledgement 855 is nothing but purchase order acknowledgement okay once that's your acknowledgement the the background the career logistics the manufacturer everything will act okay as in retail flow only the all were not seen here shipping team 856 means it was ship notification okay and then the seller will send an invoice once the goods are delivered and the buyer will send an uh, payment like remittance advice or payment 820 so this is how will happen in the retail flow okay generally i used to explain uh, for refreshers in the hotel manner so for example if, if i went to a hotel so first thing what will happen yeah so, we, yeah we totally understand it so maybe we can skip this uh... okay okay fine so this is a sample input file So this is how the sample input file and everything. And just we'll walk through the one of the EDI document which I shown you. So this is one of the EDI transaction for the partner called Ariba. So 850, it's a functional ID group in PO. And if you see here, these are the different different segments which are needed by this trading partner, Ariba. So BEG, currency, RF segments, PER means currency, you are, I hope you are aware. PER means administrative contact. The whole sum, who is responsible whenever you bought an item or anything. Okay. And then CSH is sales side requirements, the sales methods and how to buy and everything. SCAC means the shipping charges. So what are the charges for the shipping currency tax information means the GST now we call it GST the tax informations and then means the address information then the reference identifications any unique numbers so like that the RF and NN are somehow alike DTM is the time of purchase order so when you bought and when the goods will be delivered when it is acknowledged any type of dates will be there in the DTM segments MSG what is the loop ID <coughs> what does the loop ID indicate we'll have multiple N9s so this is a repeating element okay, basically. repeating repeating so multiple repeating and okay. if i look at this loop id as a it says loop repeat as one actually for this trading partner it is one but in general edi it may be multiple okay, okay. so under uh sa segments we'll have this sac currency tax n9 the and segment then, name is sac sac the total one okay so this under segment will have some sub, sub elements and then we will have some type it will have group okay some group will be there under group will have a segments you'll come to know this in the mapping so how the segments what is the group segment under segments what is the elements sub elements like component elements everything will be there in the mapping structure i will show you okay okay yeah, the dtms and then the message text means you want to write any information Okay, for example, if you order something, so to uh, be careful, like I want some other information like that. So that message you can text it. Okay, so the address information. Now we are coming to the address informations. The addresses means 
bill to address ship to address all the address will mentioned in the n1 n2 n3 n4 n1 is nothing but a bill to name so we will have ship to name also and we'll have sometimes we'll have ship from that time the qualifier will be sh here bill to name is bt ship to name is st so all our information our name phone number and then the address in the state name and the state code zip code everything will be there in the loops information like n1 n2 n3 n4 so where we usually have a n1 n3 n4 so only maximum the input files n2 if you want any additional information you can add in the n2 so usually in, in structures in edia structure we'll have three types of first, first one is uh, header record details like detail record and then status records okay see so the detail one in the detail level so header till now we have gone through the header level. now detail level so we'll have the line items for example uh, if you go to the flip card so at, at a time i am buying mobile pouch and then uh, some other mobile uh, we can say screen guards so you will have for the same order number we have multiple items so this is the one of the main looping structure in the mapping now we'll have the multiple po ones means how many items you bought that many po ones will be there nothing but this is the currency the description here we do we will we'll only have the quantity price and you measurement code you will call as a uom unit of measurement and then the barcodes or serial numbers will be present in the po ones and the pid is a product or item descriptions all the product descriptions will be on the pids so remaining everything is same and summary level means ctt is the transaction total how many line items are there in ctt that many number will be there for example three items you bought so the ctt count will be three okay and then ct will also have the quantity or the total price of the items okay it is not included gst shipping charges discount it's not included only the quantity into number of items into each price for example i bought 10 pencils 10 pencils cost 2 rupees then uh, here in the transaction total second element will have 10 into 2 means 20 rupees okay it will not have any shipping charges or delivery charges or then uh, any discounts or allowances tax all will be there so the amount which we need to pay in will be there in the amt segment okay so total monetary value so here it will be there now let us open the document again so if you see the bez so standard original order standalone order purchase order number and this will be you will know that the thing here and then purchase order date hence a purchase order number something other unique number so next rf segments these are all the here n1 n3 n4 so these are all the address information till from here detail level segments is started so first first po1 right that's why one and then quantity ordered unit of measurement code means each is one each cost how much 9.25 so if you found currency segment that dollars or INRs or something else now the cost is 9.25 into 120 so these are the some serial numbers and pid is nothing but a name of the line item this is a small widget okay the po4 also very similar to the po1 only okay and then the line item so that one also next po1 the second element second po1 and the quantity each and then price so everything will calculate if you go to ctt say one two three four five six that's why the count of ctt first element is six total amount summary so this is how the EDA document we go regularly okay okay right yes yeah. okay yeah just i want to walk through that's it now this is the sterling integrator architecture it's visible right or i need to do big screen no, it is visible okay. so uh, we have gone to the ncx tool standards uh, yeah. In fact, also, will you be sharing a sample file and uh, the, the uh, yeah, yeah, I'll share it. yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll share it. Okay. So now we are going to the EDI uh, styling architecture. So these are the different, different protocols. Okay, protocols. So the trading partners or marketplace bands means value networks. So they will send the documents via the protocols to the styling integrator. So the most uh, familiar trans protocol is AS2. 
so all the trading partners major trading partners the as2 and the next was sftp or ftps or ftp this is actually nowadays no one is using ftp okay or http and https and as so means the web services concept snp mails edxm is rostnet rinf format rostnets i hope you know right rostnet rinf yes we have worked on rostnet yeah working on rostnet formats so we'll call as rinfs okay for that also we will have different different uh, versions and different in our current ways. landscape we use as2 uh, so uh, sftp oh good okay so we'll go through that actually we'll go with the so these are and... all uh, uh, messaging Support. protocols right yeah are the messaging protocols that to send or receive documents transportation and if you see the black grid over here it's nothing but a perimeter server so no one can no one can enter right means any all can not enter so we'll have some perimeter server concept where the ip address will move to the next one and it will take care of the infra team okay so once the documents sent by trading partner via any protocol so it will receive the btb services means the partner onboarding so which part which map to invoke and which bp to invoke and everything will be there in the btb services and then the mailbox means just how we will share or uh, store or fetch the documents from local drives in stelling integrated itself we can store the documents and fetch the documents that is called mailboxes means store and forward capabilities so how to create a mailboxes and how to run the mailbox how to drop a file into mailbox and how to create a business process everything will be explained by me okay and then the business process engine how to process whenever when we received a document how to be processed so whether it is content based or file name based or content based means based on the senders and receivers we will read the input file and if it is it is so much so, so, so and so we'll call so and so means map or something like that here gpm means graphical process modeler so here is a platform where you create a business process map editor means where you create a maps and then this is a web extension so anything any error happened the error handling mechanism we'll call as an on fault so this will take care of for example you want to integrate any other tools like uh, I, ibm web sphere tools like message broker and mq and people soft adapter and gxs adapter and sap suit adapter so all the adapters can be connected so after this we'll have a map right so based on the uh, look of files means envelopes so the map is translated and we got the output of idoc and then we'll send the idoc to the legacy systems or databases or our sap systems so to here so we'll receive documents from the trading partners via protocols and it will be perimeter server then only it will allow the documents and all the processing will be happy here like pre process post process everything will be done the end document we will save an archive so how we develop the business process will be there okay and we'll save an archive the same and also the same file will send to the our back end systems like sap is our mainframe system this is how the inbound so once you send an 850 this uh, in the idoc will be created and 855 idoc will be sent to the sterling integrator here we will convert the 855 idoc means password confirmation idoc format to 855 format and with the protocols will send back to the trading partner so this is how the inbound and outbound will be performed in the sterling integrator okay so uh, other features of sterling integrator like exporting importing means resource manager will be there the operations tab and the sql managers everything uh, will go through one by one and the different how to configure the servers here like ftp server sftp servers how to configure it and how to check everything will be discussed okay uh, so today will any questions on the architecture wise yes uh, i mean so can you repeat the perimeter server usage uh, one more time please yeah the perimeter server nothing but an uh, ip hiding okay so the will uh, the one purpose is ip hiding so for example our network uh, Uh, ip address 192.68 in the locally so whenever we, the document passed from perimeter server to outside means it will be another ip address so that we'll call is an ip hiding here so that one also it will be taking care by the perimeter server and then so some we need to whitelist the ip address of the trading partners the infra team okay so for for example uh, ruchika is going to trade with me so i have to add the ruchika's ip address in our system right so that one also will be taken care by the perimeter server and proxy servers also 
so this the whatever the black grid is is nothing but a information uh, for security purposes okay mm -hmm. okay and what about this web extensions so the web extension nothing but a exception handling any human interaction means like uh, we'll have some pages web pages to send or receive documents and then any exception handling so that type of mechanisms will have the web extensions here it's a ui based uh, tool that uh, this uh, Just, selling yeah. ticket offers offers yeah yeah we'll have that one also so if any time, error occurs we would send that to some web extension application and it will display in dashboard exactly exactly so we'll have just a api kind of thing uh, is it a part of the uh, sterling integrator or does it need a separate licensing clause actually that too frankly i don't know but we have an option that but i, I didn't get a chance to work on that but we have an option mm -hmm. to have the web pages for it but i didn't work on that mm -hmm. so mainly we used to have the exception handling like we have on fault group so in that on group whatever creating a business process if we get any error in that particular sequence then on fault will invoke and using smtp adapter and then uh, mail extensions like mail my management 